Hey folks, Damon, Black Warrior Lures. Uh, getting ready for another fishing trip, and I decided to do a frequently asked questions uh, thing. Uh, I had two questions come in this week. It's one is how do I cook my fish, and two, what modifications you know have I done to my motor, my mud motor? Uh, let's see, how do I cook my fish? Well, you know, it's you know, you know, I'm, I'm one, I'm diabetic, and two, I have cholesterol problems, so I can't fry it, right? Because breading it in a bunch of flour and cornmeal is like bad for my diabetes, it makes my blood sugar go up, and deep fat frying it is totally bad for my heart, so I just can't do it. So how in the world do I cook my fish? Honestly, the George Foreman grill, I just grill it or uh, or just fry it in a pan uh, with just a little bit of either olive oil or canola oil. Uh, I love sesame seed oil because it gives it a flavor. See, the thing about fat is any fat that is solid at room temperature will clog your freaking arteries, man. So it's bad for you. So that doesn't mean you need to deep fat fry everything, but you know, you need to uh, reduce the, the amount of those, uh, those waxy fats or whatever. So I just use the George Foreman grill. So what I do is I clean my fish, and I, once I fillet it, I put it into a uh, brine. I, I wash the meat off thoroughly. Then I put it into a brine solution, salt water solution, uh, or I put beer in that or some sort of wine in, in that. Actually, like a white wine and and water solution works fine. You know, it gives it a nice aroma nice flavor uh something like that even you know either way and then once i do that especially if it's a brine solution i don't have to add any more salt to it or if you're using like a cooking wine they already have more salt in it so you don't have to add more salt i usually season my fish with uh, paprika chili powder red pepper and then garlic powder and just and almost use that as a dry rub, and then I put it on the George Foreman grill and let it grill to the point where it's just too hard, where it's overdone. Whenever I cook meat, I, you know, I work in a restaurant, and I've cooked for many years, and I prefer overdone meat. I, I don't really like, you know, the way you have to cook it in the restaurant it has to be moist, but you're always running that risk of it being slightly underdone, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's just not, you know... You're always riding that thin line when you're back there. It ought to scare you to death anytime you go out to eat. But <laughs> I, I, I want my having worked in a restaurant. I want my meat overdone. I want it dry so much that it's just dry, and uh, that's the way I cook it. That's the way I like it. So it almost becomes like a fish a jerky. So it's just overdone, and that's how I do it. I, I season it the same way all the time like that. The only difference is what am I going to marinate it in. And uh, and, and generally, if I'm not going to eat it right then, like I have a plenty of the fish to clean and have to put it away, I wanna, I'll skip the brine solution thing. I'll rinse the meat off well, and then I'll wrap it in plastic wrap, saran wrap, and then wrap that in aluminum foil, and that way all the fillets can be individually frozen, individually thawed, things like that. So much easier than putting in a bunch of water and, and, and just throwing it in a plastic bag and hoping that's going to work. That just doesn't really work. So that's how I basically cook my fish. Other one, what modifications have I done to my mud motor? Uh, right now I've done basically state what they call stage one mods. Um, there's a school of thought that says you can modify your engines in stages. You have stage one, which are easy or cheap modifications that you can make stage two or you know the most amount of modules you can make before having to do serious internal work to the engines and stage three you're really beginning to do serious internal work and stage four is just basically going all out no holds barred uh i've done all the stage one mods essentially what that means is i've you know i've as of now i've modified i uh, replaced i put a performance exhaust a performance intake and rejetted the carburetor that's all i've done uh these motors are so restricted when you get them you know that it's a wonder they run and just doing that alone is probably dollar for dollar the best bang the buck you can bang for the buck you can get out of these motors just because you can it's gonna start to get hot in here now sweating under these lights and if i had the air conditioner running it'd be like <laughs> You know, but I don't want to do that. So, you know, uh, 
but anyway, that that that's that's what I did. And uh, how much? Who knows how much horsepower that's producing now? But the engine is breathing a whole lot easier. You're getting more air and fuel into the combustion chamber, and the exhaust, the high performance exhaust, is getting more of the spent gas out. So you're just making more horsepower and more torque uh, just from doing that. And in you know, a lot of guys do that and that's it. But once you start modifying these motors, it's just not going to stop. Just plan on doing a stage two, three modifications. Now, now those of you who've seen, I've, OMB Warehouse sent me about $318 worth of parts to do a stage two, three upgrade. And we're going to do that. Like I wanted to get a few fishing trips in and videos of that up and running, showing the way the motor's running now and and then do the mods and probably take a week or so do the mods probably only take uh yeah probably take a week or so do nothing but the mods and do nothing but that film video that with the new camera i got the microphone and with the old hat cam or whatever and uh and then just go from there uh the new mods will be one we're gonna rip out that we're gonna rip out the governor and we're gonna rip out the oil sensors but most importantly we're going because the main build is turning more RPM instead of 3000 RPMs a minute. We're going to just basically double that, you know, to about you know, about 6000 RPM a minute uh, or RPM. You know, and what in order to turn that many R RPM safely, I mean, none of this stuff, you know, come on. I mean, you do this at your own risk, right? Don't don't be stupid. Uh, but anyway, you're going to put a fast put a better flywheel on an abilited flywheel because you're taking off the governor right and then along with that we're going to put a billeted rod in there because you're taking off the governor standard length rod same thing just billeted lighter weight reducing inertial and for inertia forces which means you'll generate more horsepower uh faster rpms mean you're going to generate more horsepower and torque and then uh, we're going to while we're doing all that, we're going to put a big camshaft in there, or what they call a Mod 2 camshaft or a cheater cam in the racing world, which basically makes the valves lift up higher and the valves stay open longer. So you'll be able to get even more fuel and gas into the combustion chamber and even more spent gas out. So you'll just be taking full advantage of all the stuff we did in stage one. And above that... Uh, well, uh, uh, they sent us a racing carburetor as well. The, uh, 615 carburetor. They have a carburetor that's been bored out. They took the stock carburetor and just put it on a CN machine, C machine and bored out the Venturi, the inside of it, just bored it out slightly. What that does is going to get a whole lot more air and gas in <laughs> and yet combined with the camshaft and the fact that we're burning higher RPM putting out higher rpms it's just going to work all the more so we're going to put a new carburetor on billeted rod billeted flywheel new camshaft and remove the carburetor and the oil sensor and we're going to do something with the linkage there um, because the governor the governor on these motors is what controls the throttle not your input right um so we're going to get rid of that and just have direct control over the gas how much gas is going in the motor so you know, uh, that's going to mean higher RPMs. There's going to be a whole lot more horsepower. I mean, I, I project this thing producing at least 11 horsepower. Um, you know, so imagine taking a 6.5 horsepower motor, making it produce about 11 horsepower. And what do I base that on? I just base that on what I've seen other builders do and some of the tests that they've run. If you go over to the mudmotorforums.com, you'll see they have stats up there of guys who've done this and some of these guys have access to uh cams not cams but uh, what do you call those things dynos and can do that and so at least 11 horsepower is actually fairly conservative you know and i'm not running the you know again i'm not running a the, the loop tube i'm running just a straight pipe that has a curve in it so that is not going to be as good as the big loop tube but hey it was like almost half the price and yet it's still a whole lot better than the stock. So that's what we're going for. So we're trying to get bang for buck. And it just seems that with all these stage two, three upgrades, you really almost have to go ahead and go with the RPM. Now, another thing I think, if I were going to build a very different kind of motor, like a motor that was more efficient, where efficiency was the most important thing and not so much horsepower, you know what I would do? I would do all the stage one mods. 
I would just do the whole, you know, stock carburetor, you know, rejet, you know, intake and exhaust, just that basic thing. Then I would go into the motor and do massive upgrades for the compression ratio. I would increase the compression ratio. You know, diesel engines are almost like, what, it's like 40% more efficient than gasoline-powered engines. Why? Because the compression ratios are insanely high. They're so high that you don't even need a spark plug in a diesel engine. So if you're really wanting to save more gas, I would just increase compression ratio. And I would just do something like, um, uh, let's see, I would do something like I'd get a long rod, like we were talking about the billeted rod, I just leave the I just leave the governor and all that in there. I wouldn't even worry about doing it because I'm not trying to. I wouldn't be trying to necessarily increase horsepower. I'd just be trying to increase efficiency, getting the most out of what I already have. I would just increase the uh, like long rod and a flat top piston, and that those two right there, that's going to give you a lot more uh, compression. The problem with com increasing the compression is that it's going to be harder to start the engine. And you know how some of these old lawnmowers, when you try to start the engine, it, the lawnmower pulls the rope out of your hand so hard it's like it's going to break your knuckles? Well, <laughs> you'd have to, by definition, put a much bigger, a much bigger camshaft in there. And I'm thinking, well, gosh, if you got to go doing all this camshaft stuff, you just as well take out the governor, you just as well run up the RPMs, all that. So if you're going to have to do all that, I don't think it's necessarily worth uh, increasing the compression ratio because... Um, you know, the engines are already very efficient, very economical, I should say. We can always increase the efficiency, but uh, to me, the if you're going after horsepower, the RPMs, because you can just shy of double the RPM, you can get a whole lot more fuel, basically RPM and dumping as much fuel and gas into the combustion chamber as possible. And... Uh, that gives you a whole lot more power. So that's uh, that's the uh, sort of questions and answers. So as as these questions and answer things come in, I'll probably from time to time take a few of them, answer them. If you have questions, just leave them in the, the descriptions on whatever video that you see. And I, I usually answer all, all the questions there in the description or in the comments below. I, I like chatting and stuff on YouTube. It's fun to me and it's, it's easy. It's so convenient than... You just watch the video on YouTube and talk to everybody. They don't have to worry about bouncing all these different platforms. Like you know, you know, it's actually easier to use this, and it is the website, my website itself. So why not? You guys like it, I like it. Hey, leave your comments, and um, I'll talk to you later.